So I wanted to kind of show what I had and where I'm going. So this is my Vista pump station in the East County of San Diego. So here's my Wonderware screen that I was trying to duplicate. And uh, then here's the new uh, inductive automation screen uh, doing the same type thing. And you can see that they have a couple of features that are, that are really kind of nice. The trending object is, is uh, superior to, to Wonderware. If I pull up a, a one-month trend on just one signal and uh, time it, it will take 42 seconds to pull that data off the, the PC. When I'm using the inductive automation product and I ask for a one-month trend, um, it, it's instantaneous. As, as soon as I click the mouse, boom, the trend's painted in. The trend object can be both historical and uh, real time. They give me the ability for a drop down box there, and then a nice slider bar that allows me to move in and out. You can see in the top right corner that there's an icon that's a disk symbol. This is kind of neat. I can click on that, and it'll give me an Excel export of what's occurring. Uh, in, it gives an Excel dump of the chart, which is kind of a, a nice feature. Um, I've been able to um, add out of service bits, which are the red X marks. So when a pump goes out of service, the operator can highlight it on SCADA. The software even has a mouse over. When the mouse goes over, you can see there where it asks, you know, do you want to mark this pump out of service? And the ability to update a project when a change is made on the top of the screen, you get a nice yellow banner that says, hey, there's a new uh, project available. Click here, and it'll download the new screens. Probably one of the nicest functions of the product being web deployed is that I can now build in screens in more than one location. So there's five instrumentation and control techs. We can all concurrently develop uh, screens at the same time. So that's kind of a nice feature. No longer are we limited to one guy working on the development box at a time. And in fact, because it's web deployed, any SCADA computer can actually uh, develop uh, screens. So that's another nice feature. Um, so I, I'm going to uh, show you a system that I created here for the city of Lago Vista. I'll give you a little overview about uh, what happened and all. Uh, the city of Lago Vista has uh, two water treatment plants and uh, one wastewater treatment plant. And initially we were running uh, separate uh, in-touch nodes um, at each one of the plants. And then I was um, asked by the city if we could connect all those nodes together, um, which we ended up doing. And then later on, I was asked if they could have uh, remote clients. And I said, well, it's going to get expensive. Uh, why don't we start looking into some other things that we could do or some other um, SCADA packages. And inductive automation was one of the ones that I looked into. Uh, one of the major issues was the licensing that uh, Wonderware puts out and the cost, not only for the end user, but for me as a system integrator. Um, being a system integrator, I had to actually pay uh, Wonderware every year uh, in order to be a system authorized system integrator. So um, we ended up picking uh, inductive automation. Uh, we networked uh, three plants together with fiber optic, and um, we added a, a VPN and connected it to the internet. And now the operators all have tablet PCs. And what they do is they'll connect to the internet through their cell phone and VPN into the network. And then they can operate the SCADA system as if they were at a, a local computer. And um, this is a general overview screen of the city. We have um, the three main plants. It's a total of 11 PLCs. Eight of them are remote. Uh, which we're connected with uh, licensed radio, and some of them are license-free radios. Um, this is a, uh, a general screen. Uh, one of the things that I that was a benefit with switching is that I don't have any more uh, constrictions on how many clients I have, how many licenses, how many tags I'm supporting. Uh, when I was using uh, Wonderware, I had to be kind of cautious as to how many tags that I was using in the system. So a lot of times, like, we have a lot of pumps, and they're generally very consistent. But sometimes some pumps will have certain things, other pumps won't. And in those kind of cases, I had to make sure that I wasn't creating um, extra tags for those pumps that weren't using it because I didn't want to exceed the license capacity. Um, 
since there are no tag limits with inductive automation, I can just create one kind of generic pump and create all the required tags for that one pump and use it throughout the system. Uh, you see this pump here has pretty much most of the things. Uh, we don't have some of the status of here, and so I end up graying out these items. Even though what happens is this window here for the pump is one generic window I created. I don't have to create any extra windows, and I just tell the system that maybe this tag's not used by this particular pump. And even the the object here that I created is standard for all the pumps throughout the system. You can see this pump here. This The actual object there is exactly the same as I used before, but we don't have status on the valve. So I just tell the system that it's not there. And um, those things end up being grayed out. Um, let's see, we give the um, you know, operators have um, access to all the pumps status and information and alarms. Um, we record all the events. So in other words, when every operator makes a change to the system, it gets logged, what they did, who it was that did it. Um, I also have alarms that will be for each individual item. So this is only the alarms for this one pump here. And it shows you know when it was active, when it was cleared, who acknowledged it. Um, we can add notes onto this individual pump if I wanted to, could add in um, my note. And then so now if something happens with this pump, someone can, they can mouse over it, it'll pull up my note, they can click on it, they can alter the note, or change it. So it's an easy way for the operator to see something's different with this pump in the system. Um, this is a conventional upflow clarifier. Um, let's see, we record uh, turbidity. This gives us, um, this is a runtime trend here of the actual turbidity. Um, this is a set point that the operators can change. Uh, they can bypass it if they need to, so the system won't call out or show up as an alarm if they're doing calibrations on um, the analyzer or something like that. Uh, one of the, the first things that I was asked to do with the system is actually kind of recreate um, what they were actually using before on um, with InTouch. And then after that point in time, we started adding in other things into the system um, to enhance the system. One of the things that we ended up doing is adding in um, the operators were always conducting everything in Excel. So in other words, when they had to do daily um, readings of meters and stuff, all that was always entered in Excel. So periodically, I would be asked, can you make us a report of how much water we use the entire year? So they would have to go through all the Excel sheets and try to figure out and do all that adding. Now all that stuff is done directly into the, the SCADA system itself. So the operators would come in and record the actual meter numbers into the system here. And then we can go ahead, and since it's stored in a database, I can go ahead and just pull up reports. Like if they want to know what the monthly flow was, here it is. So they can see you know, how much raw wire they were taking in, how much finished wire they were creating, what was their process loss. Um, they can go back into whatever month they want to and just pull up the data. Or they can do yearly reports. They can look at this year, last year. Um, another thing that they do, they still have to do some handwritten things and um, re recordings. So one of the issues were they had three different computers, and people would have different reports on each one of the different computers, and no one knew where to find anything. So what I ended up doing is going through and creating PDFs of all the reports that have to be handwritten, and um, I stored this up on the server, and so. Now anyone can have access to any of the, the forms that they have to use to uh, create the system or for their daily logs and stuff. Um, let's see. They, um, in the alarming screen, this is, you know, 
kind of standard stuff where, you know, your standard alarm. Uh, we added on a, the system here will call out for alarms. And what we added in is uh, text messages. And what the operators do is they'll select who's on call and add them in to the call out groups. So when an alarm comes in 10 minutes later, this person will be sent a text message. 20 minutes later, if the alarm is not acknowledged, this person, will, the people in this group will receive a text message and on down the list. And then I can take a look at the call out log, which will show me you know, what actually happened that this person had received this text message. So if something never got answered, we can go back through into the system and take a look and um, find out what happened. Um, the, uh, I want to All the tanks and images, again, are, are pretty much same and generic. So that, as an integrator standpoint, it saves me a lot of time in development since I'm using the same image over and just through the actual tag that was created for this tank and all the associated variables to that, the image gets populated automatically. So I don't have to actually do anything. Um, like we have tanks that are different sizes. These hash marks here show what the levels are. You know, so I have a high level set point, I have a low level, a disable, a return, start, stop. Now these will actually move based on whatever the set points are. And now it's not all the tanks have those set points. So just when I actually created the group of tags for this tank, it'll know uh, the image will know if that tank actually has all these set points and it will be displayed automatically without any interaction with me, from me. Um, so I guess that's uh, pretty much it. Here's our, our trend. We go through and create our trends. This is a, a daily printout report that's uh, required by the state. Um, we also have just regular trends for the operators to use. This is a standard turbidity trend. Um, I've added in some administration stuff because a lot of times I've I get asked to add in a new tag or add a different trend or can we see this on a trend? And previously, when I was using Wonderwear, I'd have to go into development and alter the trend. Um, with using inductive automation, it's all database driven, so. I can go through and here are a list of all the trends that are available in the system. If they want to see something different on a trend, like say this is their, these are all the pens that are shown on the chlorine report. If they want to change or add or something like that, I can simply do an edit down here and select whatever available pens that are throughout the, the system and either add or subtract and it's immediately updated. So I don't have to go into development. Um, one of the other benefits of the system is that since it's web-based, I have the benefit of being able to VPN and actually see the SCADA system from my office. So if I get a call um, from an operator saying something something's going on, I can actually just VPN into the system and take a look at the SCADA from there. And another benefit is, is that I can actually do development back at the office and just VPN and make those changes right on the system um, without having to drive in or anything like that. So, That's great, think, Pat. Uh, anything else you want to say as far as the overview? This is really good. I really appreciate the uh, all of the stuff you've covered. Um, other than I, you know, the uptime on the SCADA system has been exceptional. We just the last time it went out was um, actually probably last week, and that was because we lost power for like six hours, so the UPS couldn't keep up. Um, other than that, uh, you know, I can't remember the last time I actually had to reboot the system or had any any crashes in the system whatsoever. So.